Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to graph compound inequalities on a number line. We will go through compound inequalities involving or and compound inequalities involving and. Now for numbers one and two, we will break everything down along the way in order to better understand everything. We will start with an or compound inequality, then move on to an and compound inequality, and then lastly, we will end with numbers three and four. Let's jump into number one, where we have x is less than or equal to zero, or x is greater than four. So here, x has to be less than or equal to zero, or x has to be greater than four. So a solution of a compound inequality involving or is anything that makes either inequality true. So basically, this must be true, or that must be true. Now let's graph this compound inequality on a number line to give us a nice visual representation. And we're actually going to break this down into two graphs first in order to better understand what we're working with here. Then we will combine everything into one. Let's start with x is less than or equal to zero and just focus on that. Now zero is included, so we need a filled circle at zero and then an arrow going left representing everything less than zero. So zero is a solution and anything less than zero. Next, we have x is greater than four. So we need an open circle at four. Four is not included. And then we need an arrow going right representing everything greater than four and that's x is greater than four. Anything greater than four is a solution. Now, since this is a compound inequality, we need to combine these. We're going to graph them on the same number line. So we have x is less than or equal to zero, so we need that filled circle at zero with the arrow going left, and then we have x is greater than four, so we need that open circle, with the arrow going right. So this is our graph of the compound inequality. This represents x is less than or equal to zero, or x is greater than four. So as far as solutions, some numbers that will work for x and make this compound inequality true, let's try a couple of numbers out. For example, will two work for x? Is two a solution? Well, is two less than or equal to zero or greater than four? No, so two is not a solution. How about seven? Is seven less than or equal to zero or greater than four? Yes, seven is greater than four, so seven is a solution. Anything less than or equal to zero will work or anything greater than four will work and we can see that represented on the number line. Let's move on to number two, where we will have an and compound inequality. Let's jump into number two, where we have x is greater than negative two, and x is less than or equal to seven. So we have two inequalities combined by and. So here, x has to be greater than negative two, and less than or equal to seven. So a solution of a compound inequality involving and must make both inequalities true, must satisfy both. Now, something I want to mention about compound inequalities involving and, they can be written without the word and in the middle. All we need to do here is start with our variable x, and our variable is going to go in the middle. Now x is greater than negative two, and x is less than or equal to seven. And that's our compound inequality written without the word and. And we can read this starting with the variable. So x is greater than negative two and less than or equal to seven. 
So whenever you see a compound inequality written like this, it's a compound inequality involving and. So this is something to keep in mind while working with compound inequalities. Now let's graph this on a number line. And this is going to give us a nice visual representation of the compound inequality. And we're going to break this down into two graphs first in order to better understand what we're working with here. And then we will combine everything into one. First, we have x is greater than negative two. So let's just focus on that and graph that. Negative two is not included. So we start with an open circle at negative two. And then we need an arrow going right, representing everything greater than negative two. And that's x is greater than negative two. Anything greater than negative two is a solution. Next, we have x is less than or equal to seven. Now seven is included, so we need a filled circle at seven and then an arrow going left representing everything less than seven. And that's x is less than or equal to seven. Seven is a solution and anything less than seven. Now, since this is a compound inequality, we need to combine these. We need to see where they overlap. So think of it like this. We want this section right here. So we need an open circle at negative two, a filled circle at seven, and then we want everything in between. So this is our graph of x is greater than negative two and less than or equal to seven. That represents our compound inequality. So as far as solutions, some numbers that will work for x and make this compound inequality true, let's try a couple of numbers out. For example, will three work for x? Is three a solution? Well, is three greater than negative two and less than or equal to seven? Yes, so three is a solution. How about 10? Is 10 greater than negative two and less than or equal to seven? Well, 10 is greater than negative two, but 10 is not less than or equal to seven. So 10 is not a solution. So anything greater than negative two and less than or equal to seven will work. And we can see that represented on the number line. Let's move on to numbers three and four. Here are numbers three and four. And for these, we're going to graph everything right from the compound inequality. We're not going to break it down into two separate graphs like we did for numbers one and two. And feel free to pause the video and try these on your own if you would like. Let's jump into number three where we have y is less than negative three or y is greater than one. Let's start with y is less than negative three. We need an open circle at negative three. Negative three is not included. And then we need an arrow going left representing everything less than negative three. Now we need y is greater than one. So we need an open circle at one, one is not included, and then an arrow going right representing everything greater than one. And that's it, that's our graph on a number line of y is less than negative three or y is greater than one. Let's move on to number four where we have d is greater than or equal to 24 and less than or equal to 30. So this is an and compound inequality. Remember, when we have a compound inequality involving and, it can be written without and. Let's start with d is greater than or equal to 24. Now 24 is included, so we need a filled circle at 24. And D is less than or equal to 30. So let's put a filled circle at 30 as well. 30 is included. So we need 
everything greater than or equal to 24 and less than or equal to 30. So we want everything in between here. And that's it. That's our graph on a number line of D is greater than or equal to 24 and less than or equal to 30. So there you have it. There's how to graph compound inequalities on a number line. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.